Hi there, I'm Sarah Snelson and um, I'm starting off our Made New a series of devotions that are to take us up to Easter. And um, so I'm just going to share my salvation story with you. So I grew up um, in a Christian family. We went to a Pentecostal church. Uh, my parents wholeheartedly loved God and, um, and served the church that they were a part of. I got saved at an early age and, um, you know, just always had a belief in God, got saved. And I was even filled with the Holy Spirit as a teenager. But unfortunately, I just started to get a bit disillusioned um, with God. I started looking at the actions of those around me and, um, and of some things that were going on in the church rather than keeping my eyes and my focus on God. And I was a bit impatient really as well with what I felt, you know, he was or wasn't doing um, in my life. And then, so by the age of 17, I wasn't really living a godly life at all. So for the next few years, I just tried to ignore God as much as possible, really. Um, I knew where I should be and I knew the life I should be living. Um, but I, uh, I, just, I just tried to push it away, push it to the back of my mind. I had a God-shaped hole in my life. There was no doubt of it. And I just tried to fill that with relationships, with money, with alcohol, with travel, um, fully knowing that they would never fill it and they never did. Um, and I always told myself, oh, yeah, I'll sort out my relationship with God later. You know, maybe when I'm married, maybe when I've got children. Um, I just felt there was too much that I was going to lose at the time. So in 1999, I left university as a qualified social worker and I moved up to Bury uh, for a job in Bolton. And it also meant that I was closer to my boyfriend who lived in Cheshire, who I'd met at uni. The constant niggle that I needed Jesus back in my life didn't ever go. Um, I just made other voices and other vices uh, louder. And because I just knew that allowing God back in would just mean that I had to change so much of my life and particularly my relationship. As we came into 2001, I just felt that God was chasing me a bit, that I'd have some random conversations with random people in random places just about him and um, people asking me questions about, you know, kind of how I saw God in my life in the future. But it still just felt too hard. And I just felt really shameful about the decisions that I'd made um, just to let him back in my life. Then on September the 11th, 2001, I was driving home from some training in Stockport. Um, when I switched on the radio and I heard that the Twin Towers had come down, I was obviously in absolute shock like the rest of the world was. And I called my boyfriend and he confirmed that that is what had happened. And he was, you know, seeing it kind of happening on, on, um, on the internet. And as I stopped at the roundabout in Stockport, just before I was about to get on the motorway, it was just... I just said, God, I need you. That's it. I need you. I can't keep on going, living my life without you in it. And I need you back in immediately. And that was it. A split second. I was back in relationship with Jesus. Now, that was actually the easy part. The difficult part was unpicking everything that I put in my life to try and fill that God-shaped hole. Making different choices then to that of my friends, changing my priorities and walking into a church that I knew no one in. And the biggest challenge was that of my relationship with my boyfriend. This was a man that I thought I was going to marry. We fortunately didn't live together at that time, but we were planning a future together. I immediately changed elements of that relationship that I knew weren't right um, with God. And um, over the next few months, though, well, over the next month, really, that I just it became apparent that we wanted different things in life. And um, after a lot of prayer and wise counsel, I made the horrendously painful decision. And I mean, it was horrible, 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 horrible um, to end the relationship, knowing that it was the right thing to do, um, even though it really, really, really hurt. And um, I knew that however I felt right then, that God had me, that he had a plan for my life that was far better than anything I could ever try and create for myself. And of course, God did have it covered. Um, he has never, ever let me down. And no sacrifice that you ever make for God is made in vain. And I just needed to trust him. I trusted him then. 
I've continued to trust him. I trust him now. And fast forward 20 years, it's been an amazing adventure so far with God. He's always given me what I've needed exactly when I've needed it. And there's been a lot of fun in the mix too. So thanks for joining me today. Um, join us for more salvation stories over the next couple of weeks. And um, there's going to be some special devotions over the Easter weekend as well that we would just love you to be able to listen to. There may even be a part two to this story. So um, yeah, keep tuning in all week and uh, see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.